So uh, I'll go ahead and right click here to create a new track. You can go up in session and use that as well if you want. We'll go to MIDI tracks and we'll name this melody and we'll add it. It gets added. First off, we're going to make sure that the right input is selected. So we go to the, oops, sorry. We go to the input and we right click and we select our USB key station for 9E. And that, yeah, now it's selected. So we can, if we hover, we can see that. Yes, it's selected. Now we're going to add, uh, we're going to remove the reasonable synth. We right click, we delete it. Now thing is here, if I push play here, or rather if I press on my keyboard, this track still makes sound. So we're going to have to left click this and disable the input, the MIDI input. So great, that doesn't make sound, but you can see that the, on the melody track down here, you get registered that there's MIDI incoming. So we're going to add a e piano here. Now one more e piano and have that as a melody. So we'll go to new plugin, go to plugin manager, we'll search for e piano. Great. We'll take that, we'll add it, we'll insert it, and we have that again. So I'm going to Great, now we have something very basic here. We can make a melody off. So now we're going to just play along a little here and see if we can f uh, come up with some very basic, interesting melody. So if I start to play back here, you'll notice that I'm trying to play my keyboard, it makes no sound. That's because we have to activate in. We have to tell this track, or rather order that listen to the input of this track and not look for playing things on disc. So press in. So we get this. Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to show the metronome because that can be useful, especially for me. Um, the metronome gives you a click track and it's located up here. So if you left click this, you activate the metronome, you can hear the click. Okay, so we have the metronome and we've played along a little. Now let's just let's just record a, a nice little melody here. Let's not care too much about how it sounds. Uh, we make sure that we are input. Now we can deactivate it in because we are going to record this track. And that automatically listens to the input and automatically plays back what you play. And remember in order to record, we have to both arm this specific track and we have to arm the general recording order. So we press that to record. And now when I press the play button here, or space, which is the shortcut to the play button, it will start recording immediately. So I'll just start playing along a little here and we'll cut out some form of nice melody here for it. So we'll start. to do. There's a few mistakes in there, which will, which is great because that gives us a chance to kind of correct it. Okay, so we disable the record here. Disable the metronome. We'll zoom in. We'll make this track larger. Zoom out a bit here again. Scroll here. And we'll play back again just to listen to it. A couple of problems in here. First off, this note is not very nice, the F. Uh, I'll go ahead and move that down one notch to an E and see how that sounds. We'll move the playhead here. That'll have to do. Okay, and as you can hear here, <laughs> 
there's a bunch of rhythmic problems with notes not being quite accurate and things like that. Um, we are going to take care of that by quantizing the whole thing, the whole shebang, just to kind of show you how quantizing works. So quantizing is uh, having Ardor automatically move um, uh, move the notes to a specific position in the grid. So if I quantize to fourths, it'll move all of the notes to the closest fourth, making everything in sync and making everything yeah tight, so to speak. And that is, uh, I usually don't like to use that on uh, melodies and things like that because you always want a bit of the human element. Of course, if the human element is too crappy, you might want to quantize anyway. But uh, usually uh, I try to avoid quantizing, but we'll go through it uh, here to show you kind of how it's done. So if I want to quantize something, for instance, we, if we listen here again, or actually another thing that I would, another little trick that I would like to show you is if you have a numpad on your screen, uh, or rather on your screen, on your, um, if you have the numpad on your keyboard, you can press the numpad enter button to automatically enter a marker. So if I press the numpad enter here, excuse me, you can see that I get a marker. This marker can be moved around however you want. You can right click it to rename it. Fancy stuff here, for instance. So you can have a kind of a live comment section here and you can right click and remove it in order to remove it. If you have tons of locations, you can right click this track and click clear all locations. Okay, so what I'm going to do now and what I usually do actually when I uh, compose and stuff like that is I listen through something um, and I press the enter button on the numpad to create a marker wherever there's something I'm not quite liking. Uh, so I'll go ahead here and start right away, and we'll listen. And I'll press, um, I'll press the enter button where I uh, detect something that I would need, uh, I would like fixed. Okay, so those two final notes is what I think we should quantize now to start with. You can see I made uh, marks of that here. So I marked these two. So now I know that, okay, there was something here that I didn't quite like. So I'll go ahead here and I'll go into the region again. We're going to quantize these two. And I want to quantize them to fourths. That usually is enough for me, depending on what I play. So if I select both of these and press Q, I will get a quantized dialogue. This is also available in some context menu. It's available in, uh, yeah, up here as well, but I usually use Q. And here's a bunch of options. You can select the strength, you can select the swing and things like that. I just usually go for note start and that's all I use. So if we uh, leave it at this, note start, and I press quantize, you can see that it automatically moves these two in position. So if we play, to, uh, we listen to the last thing again, that they, they are uh, surgically in place or in beat. So I have just cheated life more or less, which is good if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, okay, so we have our melody here now. Now I want this melody to play all, out, uh, all, all throughout the song. So I'll need to uh, duplicate this region. But if I duplicate it now, everything will end up out of beat because the region isn't uh, in a loop friendly state, so to speak. The region isn't eight bars, which is what this should be. So I'll go ahead here and I'll resize this, pull it in to start at the same place as this one. And I'm going to make it end at the same place as the second one here. Pull in like that. Okay, great. Now I can duplicate. So I press D, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So now we have, with some quick calculations, 32 bars here. So I'll go ahead and decrease this one again. So if we play back, I can decrease the melody a little. We're actually going to uh, do a couple of things here. Meanwhile, we'll decrease the volume and we'll move the the melody to the more to the right. We can decrease the volume even more. Oh, 
Okay. That's something. We'll remove our markers by right clicking here, location markers, clearing all locations. And basically that is uh, it for MIDI. Oh, actually you can, all, you can also transpose things, which I can show you, we'll increase the size of this track, we'll scroll in. And if you want to transpose things, you select the notes you want to transpose. I pressed control plus A to select all. You can also do like this if you only want to transpose these notes. I'll select all of them, I'll press T and you get to transpose MIDI dialogue. And I want to transpose this one octave up. We'll try that. So we'll scroll wheel up to get this one. We can use these. We can move it down, of course. So on. I'm moving this up. You press transpose. You can also use semitones here. Uh, I press transpose. And it moves everything up one notch. Listen to this. So that's the uh, the same melody transposed. We're going to transpose this down again because that's a bit too bright. We'll move this down. Okay, so one final thing, although <laughs> I keep uh, coming up with things I can actually talk about here in MIDI, but one final thing I'm going to show you is uh, if you want to uh, do a minor variation of one of these regions. So for instance, every other time the volume plays, we might want to change one or several of these notes, but we don't want to re-record or redraw the entire region or anything like that. You can uh, unlink the region from the other copies. So make this its own region that's not dependent on these anymore. To do that, you right click the region, you go to MIDI and you select unlink from other copies. If I press that and I make changes here, I move this up. You can see that it moves up in all but this. So this is now its own region. So what I can do if I want to have a variation here, um, let's see here if it doesn't make much sense. Well, it doesn't make much sense, but we'll see here. Listen to how this sounds. We'll move this up, up to here. Out the, oh, actually, we, we try that. Okay, I'm just, yep, yeah, this is, there's not much science behind this right now. We'll change the two final notes as well. Move them all the way up here. Save. Okay, so now we've created a variation. So you can see here, it's quite different. Um, we haven't listened to the entirety of it. We'll listen from here. There's an awful lot of listening right now. Sorry for that. You can also hear an airplane in the background. That's where I live, right next to the airport. That's also for making music. that'll have to do. Okay, so now we want to put one of these regions here as well. So we'll, uh, in the final one here, so we get two of each pairs each time. Um, so we'll go ahead and delete this one. And we are going to duplicate this one. And we're going to pull that and place it here. Okay, great. So now we have this set up. Now, finally, that's it for the basic MIDI editing. Now we'll move on to recording, uh, recording our guitar. 